Hello friends. So welcome to lecture series on multivariable calculus. In the last lecture we have seen that uh, what do we mean by a function of several variables, domain and range of two or more than two variable functions, whether region is open, closed, mounted, unbounded, all those we, uh, all these things we have seen in the last lecture. Now how can you find limit of multivariable functions? Okay. So we recall it. First we recall for limits for one variable functions. So, suppose we have limit x tending to a f x is equal to n. So, what does it mean? It means it means that uh, as x approaches to a f x approaches to n. So, roughly speaking when we say that limit x tend to a f x equals to l this means as x tending to a f x tends to l. Now, how can we define this mathematically? So, uh, the mathematical definition of limit is for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a corresponding real number delta greater than 0 such that mod f x minus l less than epsilon whenever 0 less than mod x minus a less than delta. You take any epsilon it as 0, no matter how small, how large epsilon you are taking, there will always exist a corresponding delta get and 0 such that f x minus l the mod of this less than epsilon whenever this quantity less than delta greater than 0 or we can say that this implies mod of f x minus l less than epsilon. Now, what does it mean? What does this definition mean? Now, let us see. Now, here here we are having uh, that limit uh, x tending to a f x is equals to l. This means for every epsilon it as 0, there exist corresponding delta get as 0 such that mod f x minus l less than epsilon uh, less than epsilon whenever 0 less than mod x minus a less than delta. Now, this means this means that uh, x minus a is less than delta greater than minus delta okay. and this means that x is less than a plus delta and greater than delta minus delta plus a and of course, x should not equal to a because if x equal to a then it is equal to 0 and x should not equal to a. Uh, this sometimes we call as deleted neighborhood. This we are also called as a deleted neighborhood of x at a. Now, see, similarly what this means what uh, this inequality represent? This is f x minus l less than epsilon greater than minus epsilon or f x is less than l plus epsilon and greater than l minus epsilon. So, this means now this is this is suppose l this is f x equal to l. Okay. Now, uh, this is suppose l minus epsilon and this is suppose 
L plus epsilon. Okay. Now, x is between a minus delta to a plus delta. You take suppose this is x equal to a, suppose this is a minus delta and this is suppose a plus delta. Now, this definition means, this means you take any epsilon greater than 0, no matter how small, how large epsilon you are taking, there will always exist a delta such that, such that, such that the image of, image of all those x lying in this interval will always be contained in this band, will always be contained in this band. Means you take any epsilon greater than, greater than 0, no matter how small, how large you are taking, there will always exist a corresponding delta such that image of all those x lying in this interval will always be contained in this band. Now, if you take epsilon very small tending to L, tending to 0, then this delta will definite will tend into 0. That means, that as x approaches to A, f x will approach to L, because as epsilon tend to 0, this will tend to L and as delta tend to 0, this will tend to A. So, as x tend to A, f x will tend to L. Okay. So, so we can say that uh, we can say that f of uh, all those uh, a minus delta to a plus delta, this uh, all those x lying in this interval, okay, will be contained in L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. So that means for every epsilon it is zero, there will exist a uh, deleted neighborhood of uh, x at a such that the image of all those x lying in this interval will be contained in totally inside this band, totally inside this interval. Okay. So, this is how we can define uh, limit of single variable functions. Okay. Now, let us first discuss few examples based on this. For example, limit x tending to 2, 2x plus 4. 2x plus 1 is equal to 5. This is very simple, you one can easily see that limit of this simple function 2x plus 1 is x x added to 2 is 5. How can we prove this using delta epsilon definition? So, let us see uh, how can we prove. So, so let epsilon greater than 0 be given. You take any epsilon greater than 0, you, uh, you take some epsilon greater than 0, okay. the same process will repeat for, a, for any epsilon greater than 0. So, we can say that for every epsilon greater than 0, there will exist some delta. So, basically what we have to show? We have to show that for you take any epsilon greater than 0, there will always exist corresponding delta such that such that, that definition holds. Uh, what we have to prove basically? that for every epsilon greater than 0, there will exist a corresponding delta greater than 0 such that mod of 2 x plus 1 minus 5, this is f x minus L less than epsilon, yeah less than epsilon whenever 0 less than mod x minus 1 less than delta. So, basically, basically mod x minus 2 less than delta. Okay. So, basically we have to show the correspondence of delta in terms of epsilon, we have to show the existence of delta. Okay. So, how can we do that? Now, we start with this inequality, okay. this is mod 2 x plus 1 minus 5, this is equals to mod 2 x minus 4, okay. this is equals to mod 2 x minus 2, this is equals to 2 mod x minus 2. Okay. And this is equals to if you take if this is less than delta, so this is less than delta. Now, this quantity this is less than 2 delta because this quantity is less than delta. 
Now, if we choose 2 delta less than equals to epsilon, then then uh, mod of 2 x plus 1 minus 5 less than epsilon whenever 0 less than mod x minus 2 less than delta. Now, uh, this is because this is because whenever you choose whenever you choose delta less than equal to epsilon by 2, then this inequality always holds because this this is less than 2 delta which is less than equal to epsilon ok. So, that means this is less than this is less than epsilon whenever this is less than delta. So, this inequality always holds whenever delta is less than equal to epsilon by 2. You choose any delta greater than 0 you can always you can choose any epsilon greater than 0 you can always find delta which is less than equal to epsilon by 2 for which this inequality holds. So, we have shown the existence of delta in terms of epsilon for different delta for different epsilon delta will be different ok, but we have shown the existence of delta in terms of epsilon such that this inequality hold. Hence, we can show we can say that this limit exists and is equal to 5 ok. So, this is how using delta epsilon definition we can show that the existence of a limit of a function. Now, same concept we uh, extend for two variable functions ok. Now, how can we do that let us see. Now, we say that for two variable functions we say that f approaches the limit l as x y approaches to x naught y naught if the values of x y uh, values of f x y lie arbitrarily close to a fixed real numbers l for every x y that are sufficiently close to x naught y naught. You take you take any x y that are sufficiently close to x naught y naught f x will arbitrarily close to l. That means, f x will approach to l as x y is approaches to x naught y naught x y is arbitrarily close to x naught y naught. How can we define this in terms of delta f epsilon? Let us see. Now, here we are having two variable functions instead of a single variable function. Now, in single in single variable function in single variable function say we have a x equal to a. So, when we take when we take uh, disc at this point at x equal to a. So, this will be an interval it is a minus delta to a plus delta this is an interval. Now, when we take point in two variable a function of two variable ok say here x naught y naught. Now, instead of uh, an interval it will be a disc centered at this point ok. It will be a disc centered at x naught y naught. So, how can I define limit now? Now, limit x y tending to x naught y naught f x y is equals to l. So, how can we prove whether limit exists and is equal to l? So, for that again we will repeat the same definition for a two variable functions for all epsilon greater than 0 there exist a corresponding real number delta greater than 0 such that mod f x minus f x y minus l less than epsilon whenever 0 less than under root x minus x naught x minus x naught whole square ok plus y minus y naught whole square less than delta. So, you take you take any epsilon greater than 0 there will always exist a corresponding real number delta greater than 0 such that uh, this inequality hold whenever this is less than delta or greater than 0. So, this is a deleted neighborhood of x naught y naught x naught y naught of radius delta. 
So, this is uh, basically a circle radius delta. Okay. Uh, now, now again what does it mean? It means that uh, now this, this inequality means that f x y is uh, less than l plus epsilon to l minus epsilon and this means all x y that lies inside the region inside the disc of radius delta and center x naught y naught. Okay. That means, that means this region center x naught y naught and radius delta this region and this means this is l minus epsilon and this is l plus epsilon and this is some l. Okay. Now, you choose any epsilon greater than 0, you choose any epsilon greater than 0, there will always exist a corresponding delta such that all those x y which lie in this disk, the image of all those x y which lie in this disk will lies totally in this band which will lie totally inside this band. No matter how small epsilon or how large epsilon you are taking, there will always exist a corresponding delta such that the image of all those x y lying in this disk will totally contain in this band. Okay. So, as epsilon tending to 0, this will tends to L and this will tends to x naught y naught. Okay. So, this is how we can define uh, we can define a uh, limit for two variable functions. Now, since since mod of x minus x naught is always less than equals to under root x minus x naught whole square plus y minus y naught whole square because this is always true. So, this definition can also be written as mod f x y minus l less than epsilon whenever 0 less than mod x minus x naught less than delta and 0 less than mod y minus y naught less than delta. That means, instead of disc it may be a rectangle. Okay. Instead of disc it may be a rectangle. Then also we can apply the same definition. Now, now let us discuss few examples based on this. So, that that uh, concept of limit will be more clear. First, we have some properties of limit. Now, limit suppose limit x y tend to x naught y naught of x y is L and limit x y tend to x naught y naught g x y is L m. Then the addition of uh, addition and subtraction of f x y and g x y limit x y tend to uh, x naught y naught is L plus minus m. And similarly, we have the product of uh, two functions, then the limit will also be product. Then scalar multiplication will be k into L, division by a uh, f upon g will be simply L upon m, m should not equal to 0 and similarly, we have the next property. These are very straightforward. Now, come to uh, uh, problems based on delta epsilon definition. Using delta epsilon definition show that this is equal to this, the first uh, problem it is limit x y tending to 1 comma 2, 2 x plus y is equal to 4. So, how can we how can we prove it? Where, otherwise, it is very simple. You see, when you substitute x equal to 1 and y equal to 2, the value is 2 plus 2 which is 4. Now, if somebody asks, how can we prove mathematically that this limit exists and is equal to 4? So, we have the only option is delta epsilon definition. We can use delta epsilon definition to show that this limit exists and equal to 4. How can we proceed? For that, we will let epsilon greater than 0 be given. Okay. Now, again we have to show the correspondence of a delta, corresponding delta greater than 0 such that we have to show that uh, there exists a corresponding delta get and 0 such that uh, mod 2 x plus y less than 4 less than epsilon whenever 0 less than under root x minus 1 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square less than delta or 
mod 2x plus y minus 4 less than epsilon whenever 0 less than mod x minus 1 less than delta and 0 less than mod y minus 2 less than delta. So, we can use any definition either this or this to prove uh, this result. Okay. Now, now you take mod 2 x plus y minus 4, this is equals to mod of 2 into x minus 1 plus y minus 2. You can easily see that it is 2 x plus y which is 2 x plus y minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4. Okay. Now, this is uh, less than or equals to mod of 2 x minus 2 x minus 1 plus mod of y minus 2. Because mod of a plus b is less than or equals to mod a plus mod b. Now, this is equal to 2 times mod x minus 1 plus y minus 2. Now, mod x minus 1 so it so it will be better if you apply this definition because this is direct okay for this particular problem now mod x minus 1 is less than delta if you take so this is less than 2 delta and this is again delta which is 3 delta so if we choose so if we choose or if we take 3 delta less than or equal to epsilon then mod of 2 x plus 5 minus 4 less than epsilon whenever 0 less than mod x minus 1 less than delta and 0 less than mod y minus 2 less than delta. Okay. If, if we choose if we choose 3 delta less than equal to epsilon then this quantity will be less than epsilon and whenever this is less than delta and this is less than delta. So, this inequality holds if this uh, this delta is less than or equal to epsilon by 3. So, for any epsilon we have shown the corresponding delta existence of corresponding delta such that this inequality holds. Hence, we can say that this limit exists and is equal to 4. Okay. So, the next example now limit Now, let us discuss this example. Uh, now, here it is uh, basically a 0 by 0 form. So, it is very difficult to say whether this limit exists or not. Okay. Uh, again, if this limit exists, so we have to show this by delta epsilon definition. That means, we have to show the existence of delta corresponding to every epsilon at n 0. So, how can we proceed? We, we have uh, suppose this limit exists and we have to show the existence of this limit. So, let epsilon get n 0 be given. Okay. Now, you take x y upon under root x square plus y square. Okay. So, this is equals to mod of x y upon under root x square plus y square. Okay. Now, uh, we know that uh, we know that x minus y whole square is always getting to 0. So, x square plus y square minus 2 x y is always getting to 0. So, x y will always be less than or equals to x square plus y square by 2. So, mod of this quantity will also be less than or equals to x square plus y square by 2. So, this is less than or equals to 1 by 2 x square plus y square upon under root x square plus y square. So, this is equals to under root x square plus y square upon 2. Okay. Now, now what we have to show here? Here we have to show that that uh, x y upon under root x square minus y square plus y square minus 0 will be less than epsilon whenever 
whenever 0 less than under root x square plus y square less than delta. So, so this quantity will be less than delta by delta by 2. So, if we choose delta by 2 less than equal to epsilon, then then uh, mod of x y upon under root x square plus y square will be less than epsilon whenever 0 less than under root x square plus y square less than delta. So, if you take any delta satisfying this inequality, so this inequality will be satisfied. So, we have shown the existence of delta corresponding to any epsilon such that this inequality holds. So, hence we can say that this limit exists and is equal to 0. Okay. So, in this way we can prove that uh, using delta epsilon definition that, uh, that the limit of 2 or more than 2 variable function exists and is equal to L. Okay. Now, we will see some more properties of, del, uh, of uh, limit of several variable functions in the next lecture. So, thank you very much.